to another Garage Time with Goody. And today, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be fixing the ticking noise in the engine of a 2014 Dodge Journey. 3.6 liter engine, all wheel drive. What we're gonna be doing today is without a doubt, the biggest job that I have ever done before. I'm gonna to have to take apart the entire top of the engine and I'm gonna to have to replace the lifters and the rocker arms because there has been a known defect in the Pinstar engines. There's been a lot of people that's done this video, but not me. I haven't done it yet, so you guys can get a new perspective and a new video. You see, a lot of people have done this video with the engine already out and setting on an engine um, just hanging from the air and not inside the body of the car. We didn't get to see how hard it is to get to those things in the engine. And I'm gonna be doing this, just a regular guy, shade tree mechanic, getting to doing this job, reaching my arms in there, and we're gonna see if any problems arise along the way. So without farther ado, Let's get started. Can you guys hear that engine tick? First thing you want to do is you want to move this plastic shroud that goes over top of the engine and you just simply grab both sides and you just give it a kind of wiggle and pull up and this will come right off and just set it to the side so that uh, you won't lose it. And this exposes the top part of the manifold. And this is, this is gonna need to come off. And here is the breather. What we're gonna take off first is the breather. The very first thing we wanna do, and this is something you're gonna wanna do anytime you're working on your car and it has anything to do with anything remotely electrical at all, you want to disconnect your battery. Always remember that. That way you don't get shocked or it doesn't arc or mess up your new parts that you're installing so in every car there's a positive and negative terminal make sure you disconnect those before you start the job on this particular car when i unhook the battery the battery is actually located underneath the wheel well and underneath the splash guard so it's a lot of work to get to that battery but an easy way to disconnect the terminals of the battery is to go up here you'll see a plastic cap over the positive that's red and right here is the negative so you'll want a 15 millimeter socket with ratchet and you can go ahead and disconnect these terminals from up here and that way you don't have to take your uh, splash guard off your wheel well and go up underneath the bumper. You can just have easy access right here. And you just set these up out of the way. First thing I'm gonna do is remove all the breathing apparatus right here. And the purpose of this is it's going to give me clearance to take off the upper intake. So 
So there are one, two, three, four screws that I see that needs to be taken off first. And it's roughly around each corner of this plastic filter box. Also, once you take this off, you might wanna also just take a peek at your filter and see if it is clean or if it needs to be replaced. And that goes for any part. Once you're in here doing a certain job, if you ever see another part that's about to fail, common sense, go ahead and replace it. There is a vacuum hose that goes from this breather box to the valve cover. I'm just gonna go ahead and wiggle it back and forth. And if it's stuck, you can take a like flathead screwdriver and push it back some, or even a pair of pliers. Just be careful and do it easily. As this is plastic, you don't wanna break anything. So don't try to overpower anything. See, that just came right off just like that. I'm going to disconnect some of these vacuum hoses. Uh, there's a hose right here. If you can see that one. Just go ahead and wiggle it gently back and forth. There's a sensor right here. And you just push in, push out, and unplug that. And here is also another vacuum hose. And I'm just gonna use the, uh, I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to gently push back. Remember, this is all plastic. So just take your time. Don't use any Hulk strength because you could break the plastic. And there's also one here in the back, in the back back here, if you can see and it just pulls right off. You wanna be careful with these. You don't want them to break. And as you can see right here, you can use an eight millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver. And there's a metal clamp that you can loosen up right here, which is what I'm doing with the flathead screwdriver. And I'm just gonna loosen that up where I can pull this up and then just wiggle this a little bit and pull it on out of there. Now, as you can see, there's, I'm gonna turn this at an angle and you can see there is a plastic retainer here and I'm gonna use the plastic uh, retainer pry bar to pop that off of there. So I'm gonna take this little plastic, or I'm gonna take this re, this pry bar, this pry tool, and I'm going to put it right over there, and I'm just gonna move it to the left and right. And by doing that, it won't break the plastic pieces. But if you do, you can get a plastic hose retainer, like at AutoZone, or order them online, no big deal. So I'm gonna put this breather out of the way now. And then I'm gonna set these vacuum hoses back out of the way gently so that they will be, so that they will not get damaged in any way. And if you want, you can label them. This would be a good time to label them, which I've already labeled the hoses and you can label them any way that you want, where you know where they go when they get back. Like I labeled them like hose intake number two, number one. That way you won't get confused with the hoses. Another trick you can do is actually take a picture with your cell phone or any kind of camera device uh, before you take it off. And that way you'll know where each of them go when it, you, it's time to put everything back together. 
there's going to be places on this wiring harness where there's more plastic tabs that you'll need to take off with the retainer tool. There's a plastic silver tab right here. And I just use this pry bar or you can use a screwdriver and this pushes up and then you'll push in and then just kind of wiggle it a little bit until it comes out. Just like that. Then, then there's a plastic connector with the metal tab that's holding it right there. And then there's also one right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wiggle that up. And that comes up. There is another plastic standoff that you need to uh, the plastic standoff it could be a plastic piece that holds the hose in this vacuum hose that you can just unclip and again you can just set these out of the way that can turn to the right because it's just connected right there and I'm just clearing everything so that I can get ready to take the upper intake off now the next part of the breather that needs to come off is actually connected to the throttle body here a lot of people will say the reservoir right here will need to come off the ho and the hoses to it but I find that really isn't the case you can disconnect the top hose with the pair of pliers and just gently wiggle and pull back the hose until it comes back and you can put it out of the way just scoot this out of the way in the back this hose right here is usually connected with a plastic uh, standoff you can try to remove that sometimes it will break off just like this one did and then you'll have to replace it doesn't hurt anything but you want to make sure that you're able to move this bottom hose to the power steering fluid out of the way you'll see this connector right here that connects to this breather and you'll see in the middle there's a piece of plastic you just push in and pull out and just like that move it out of the way and then we're ready to take this part of the breather off now this part of the breather also has a plastic stand holding it in right here and I'm going to take the uh, pry tool and go ahead and move that out you can use a flathead screwdriver just like I did there and I'm going to take the pry tool in and just move it back and forth and you can see it raised that plastic up and then I can just take that out you want to be careful up here because there's going to be a rubber o-ring up here that connects up by where the valve body is but what you want to do this is going to be sitting on two stands back here that just pop into place like two rubber ball stands and you're going to kind of want to get in here like this on each side and you're going to want to kind of pull up and to the left and kind of wiggle it back and forth and then that will start moving it out and just i'll use the word gingerly see here's that o-ring that just started to come out and uh, this puts a firm fit between the breather and where the valve body connects and it causes no air leaks. So you wanna make sure you don't lose that. Now, sometimes this is a pain to get out of here, but if you just work with it, it will come out without anything it will come out without any major hassle. See, just like that, moved it over here. It feels like it's gonna come out. And 
and there we go just like that this part of the breather's out you'll see on the bottom those are two rubber grommets they actually sit on these two plastic balls right here and it just pops in there and that's how it sits on there okay this is the upper intake and this is a top view you're going to see that there are seven eight millimeter bolts that need to come out here's one two three and then down inside of the plastic is four five down inside the plastic again is six and then up here by the throttle body there's this one that's kind of sneaky and it's seven now another thing is right here in these wells of the of the plastic you're going to want to use a skinny deep well socket so that it fits down in there if not you're going to have a problem of fitting that eight millimeter socket down in there so besides those little tips it should be ready to go the front of the intake you're going to see two 10 millimeter bolts and i'm just going to take these off with a 10 millimeter socket and I can, once you break the bolt, a lot of times you just take it off by hand like that. I'm gonna go over here and get the second one, which is a smidgen harder to get to sometimes, but not too bad. And again, I'm just gonna, once it's broke loose, I'm just gonna take it off by hand. And once you take those two off the front, immediately in the on the driver's side, in the back, you're gonna see this black metal bracket. There's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts at the top. Again, you just take these off. And again, once you break it loose, you can just twist them off by hand. And we're gonna do the same for this one. All right, there is a black metal bracket right here that we just tucked those two 10 millimeter nuts off of. And as you can see, there's a metal hose that comes down. I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter gear head, uh, a gear head wrench. I'm gonna fit that in there. And I'm going to start loosening up this bolt. Now this is a two-sided bolt. And it has washers on the bolt. And the reason you wanna be careful when you're taking this bolt out, uh, if you see how it lines up with this hole right here in the metal space, you want to line it up so when you're taking the bolt out, it lines up with that hole. So that way, you'll have enough room to take this bolt out. If not, it'll try to squish up against this metal part here. So, you want to take it out just like that. And as you can see, it's going to have enough clearance now. And once you take out that bolt, do not lose this washer the side that the washer is on is the side that goes screws back into the engine so now this uh, this black bracket should be able to come off you'll notice it has a wiring harness on it i want to take this black bracket and just set it out of the way now you'll see that the front two bolts are kind of slightly curved downward. So what that means is when I go to lift up this intake, I'm going to lift it up to where it's slightly down like that, and then just push it back a little bit and pull it up. And then the upper intake comes off just like this. 
with the throttle body and everything. You see what it looks like underneath. And I'm gonna set it to the side. As you can see, it has this little styrofoam protector. We'll wanna put that somewhere that you will not lose it. Now, this is the first major step to our job today. But I would also like to let you know, this is also the first major step to, if you were going to replace the spark plugs, this is how you would do it. So while you have this apart, if you haven't replaced your spark plugs, you're gonna to wanna to do that because now right here, one, two, three, four, five, and six, you now have access to your spark plugs. If you need to change your oil cooler, you can go ahead and start to do with that job because you've already got the upper intake off. But we're gonna go a different way and we're going to change the rocker arms and the lifters. One of the important things, once you get the upper intake off, is to cover these holes so that nothing can get down into the engine. Because if a lot of debris gets down into the engine, then your engine will be done for. And all of this work will be for nothing. So we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna be careful and you can use an old rag or shop towels like I'm doing and cover these intake holes up while you're doing the rest of the work. Better be safe than sorry, as they say. Got one more. You're gonna to wanna to take each of these ignition coils or ignition boots, whichever you want to call them, press down and out. You're going to want to unplug all of these. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the ones in the back too. Now you don't have to remove the spark plugs but the ignition coils you actually do. And these are gonna be, these, these bolts are a little bit long, but once you break them loose, you can get them out by hand. That's what they look like. Then you're gonna just grab the boot and wiggle a little bit and pull up and that takes the boot out. To save time on the video, uh, I'm gonna do all of these ignition coils the same way. Just take them all out the way I took that first one out. We're gonna work on the front uh, valve pan first. Now, the wiring harness is connected to the valve pan. Uh, you wanna get these off of here, just move it back left and right and pull slightly up until those come off and you can reuse them. You basically want to get every wire that's attached to the valve pan off of the valve pan. So that way when we're done, it can lift up off of here. And then, so there should be, on my engine, there's two. And this is a 3.6 liter variable valve timing engine. Is right here, this little sensor. There's a red tab, if you push it, if you push this back and then push down, you can unplug that and just set that out of the way. The next step is these actuators here. And you are gonna wanna mark these actuators in the way they came out. And the way I'm doing it is I'm using a paint marker that you can definitely see that pops from the black color that the so the actuators are all that the actuators are you can see i put one dot for the front and two white dots for the back then you're going to want to unplug them you just push in the plastic tab 
and unplug these. See that there are three Torx bolts in each of these actuators, and they are T25. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and take those off before you take the valve pan off. And that's what I'm gonna do now, first. So the tool I'm gonna to be using to get good clearance in here is this very small ratchet with a T25, with the Torx 25. Then you may wanna slightly wiggle this back and forth Until it comes out. As you can see, there's a rubber gasket that goes around the actuator there. You wanna make sure that it's either on the actuator here, make sure that it didn't come off right here into the valve cover. We're gonna repeat this down here. Then again, right here, you wanna wiggle this a little bit. Don't just pull on this, it could break off. But wiggle the whole thing, and then it should come out. And you definitely wanna make sure that that O-ring, that rubber O-ring is on the actuator, or if it's on the, stuck on the valve pan, you wanna make sure that you get that rubber O-ring out of there. Do to make it easier, there's different ways to doing this, and this is how I'm gonna do it. Right below on this uh, valve pan, mounted to the motor are these front metal brackets. And it really prevents me from getting to some of these bolts, and it's gonna prevent the valve pan from coming up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna take these two metal brackets off. These are the brackets that hooked to the upper manifold. There is a plastic piece down here that is capped onto the bolt. I'm gonna try to slide that off. On your particular engine, it may be different, but on these two bolts you'll see here and underneath right here, there is two nuts and bolts holding in these metal brackets. This had a plastic tab that went over it and I just took that off with a flathead screwdriver okay what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get this wiring harness out of the way so that'll give me a little bit of leeway here and I'm gonna take it off down here too And I'm gonna peel that back a little bit. There'll be one on the metal bracket itself. And if you can remove those, you'll see you'll be able to get to this metal bracket a whole lot easier. When, but then you just use a gear, a gear wrench, which is 13 millimeter to take off that nut. And when you break the nut, you can actually move it by hand if you want. Or if you're using a ratchet, you can go ahead and do it that way. But you'll see this start to loosen up. This one has come out and you wanna be careful because it has a washer on it and it's double-sided, just like the one that came out of the bracket up there. So remember, the side that has the washer is the side that's gonna be screwed back into, mounted back into the engine. So do not lose these. Now you'll see with that bracket gone, I can easily get to this nut right here. Before, I couldn't get to it. Now I'm going to remove the second bracket right here. 
Okay, this is also 13 millimeter. I'm using a gear wrench. Once this nut and bolt is loosened, you can see that it's coming off by hand. Work that off of there. And then the metal that's underneath there, just push it off. And you'll see there's actually two, two nuts holding that on actually. The first, the first nut just allows you to remove the metal hose. And then you go in after you remove the metal hose, you push this back. And then this goes up there and allows you to remove this, the second bolt. Remember there's a washer on it and you don't want that to come off because that's the way this is gonna go back into the engine. And then the second metal bracket is off. All right, to the right of this valve pan cover, there's a bolt that's like this but it has a plastic tab that holds down the wiring harness and it's already brittle. I'm just gonna go ahead and push that off there and get this off of here. Oh, right here. And then if you look on around here, there's another plastic tab that's on the valve pan. They can be taken off. And that can be reused. And just set it over here. And you just want everything to clear, pretty much clear the valve pan. Now there are 12 eight millimeter bolts holding down the valve pan cover. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking those off. Okay, I'm gonna do this with all of these. And I'm not gonna record taking off all of these, so it'll save some time. How much will I record? It's fine now. You'll see these just loosen up enough, and you'll know when they're loose because you'll feel that it's not unscrewing anymore. That's the way all of these bolts are. But there are two out of the 12 that are like this. Also, before you take off the valve pan, you're going to want to remove this right here. It's going to have an O-ring on this too. And then this 
long screw comes out. This is where the timing chain is, and this is where there's sealant that holds this valve pin down. And what we wanna do is to take a flathead screwdriver and be easy and just barely wiggle it up and down and be careful not to damage the aluminum or the plastic until this comes loose a little bit. So what I'm doing is I have this flathead screwdriver and I'm just pushing it up to the left a little bit. And I'm doing that over here. You just pull like that once the bolt is out. And you'll see that the you'll see that the sill came out too. And this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like underneath. And your new kit's gonna come with, in case you have a leaky spark plug well, which in this case we do, bank number one, it comes with new O-rings so that we can get that fixed. And uh, we have a new gasket seal that we're gonna be replacing. Underneath of the car, by the wheel, there is the crankshaft. And you're gonna want a one inch and one sixteenth socket. And you're gonna to want to move that crankshaft until it is lined up at the top. Until the two arrows are pointing together on the left. See, you'll see on the left cylinder head that those arrows should be pointed at each other. You want to inspect these cam lobes. You see right here where they come in contact. Right here, these are cam lobes. And what you want to do, you want to inspect these cam lobes to see if they're bent or what kind of damage they have. And depending on what kind of damage, that determines whether you can reuse them or not. And if you can't reuse them, they're gonna cost you an average of about, give or take, $300 a piece. Now, when you go to take these off, you're gonna to wanna to take off one at a time, not both of them. Now, I'm gonna be explaining the why, why we have to do this job. There's a lot of debate on why that these rocker arms fail. Uh, a lot of people have come to the conclusion that the first two part numbers that were released by Chrysler were faulty. They had faulty bearings in the rocker arms and they prematurely failed and would cause the clicking noise because they were not working properly. And if you continue to run your vehicle this way, it would eventually destroy your engine. You're gonna ask, how many should you replace? And will this fix it? In my opinion, you should replace all of the rocker arms uh, there's 12 on each cylinder head and I would get the Mopar original or Melling M-E-L-L-I-N-G Because now they have revised the part number and They're saying that they've put a different kind of bearing in there and a better quality bearing and this should fix the problem 
and that reoccurring ticking sound shouldn't happen again. Of course, that's all to be determined, but that is the, the why, and then the fix is to get the replacement part that has the new part number and to not get any third party knockoff generic uh, rocker arms. Those may not last either. I will include in the video description the part numbers of the parts you want to buy when you're doing this job. Because trust me, you don't want to do this again. You don't want to have to open uh, the valve pans back up and totally redo this job or even risking that the camshafts right here themselves can be damaged. You know, if these cam lobes were too damaged, we would have to replace the whole camshaft. And like I said, those are right around $300 a piece. And you know, money adds up. Also, while we're doing this job, it comes with, the replacement parts come with new O-ring seals for the spark plug wells. And if you had any oil in those spark plug wells, this should fix that problem too when you replace those O-rings for the spark plug wells. So this should take care of a lot of problems and you should have a smooth sounding engine after this. And also, I will be replacing the lifters while we're in here too. Uh, the lifters usually don't go bad, but while I have it apart, I have bought all new ones and I'm gonna be replacing the lifters and rocker arms. There's 24 total parts I'm gonna be replacing on the left cylinder head. And that is 12 rocker arms and 12 lifters. On the left cylinder head, once these two arrows are pointed to each other, I'm marking uh, a few places so that I'll have a reference in case these camshafts or phasers or even the chain moves while I'm working on this. You have to wipe the oil off of this so that it'll have a surface that the paint will actually go on or that it will dry. I'm uh, doing that for the bottom. Also, you can see on the back of the phaser and the camshaft, these two indentions line up and it's right in the center of the retention cap right here. So I'm just gonna make a mark right here. Now down here, they don't line up to the center of the cap, but just above it. And I'm gonna make a mark right there. because what I'm gonna to have to do, once I use the plastic piece, the spacer, and loosen everything up, I'm going to have to push the cam shaft into the resting position about 30 degrees up here. So if any of this moves while I'm fixing this, I have these reference, these reference marks so I can fix that before I put it back together. I'm working on the left cylinder head, you're gonna to want to put this into place. Uh, it goes in between right here where these teeth are. It is part 10202-2 and it says left. And you're gonna put this in like this. To get this wedge in here, I had to actually barely um, tap it in with a rubber mallet. Okay, you're gonna want to have these two tools first. This reaches down 
into here and it pulls and th this right this releases the piston this right here is part 10200a-1 i'm going to reach this down here and if you can't see the hole you can use a little flashlight which is what i think i'm going to do i'm going to use a little flashlight and you put this down in here like so to where you can see then I've got it I've got it in there I can see it then you want to take this and this was a little hard to get into <clears throat> and I just used a 36 millimeter socket with a breaker bar to break these phaser bolts right here or the oil I believe this is the oil control gonna loosen them up some and you can see there's there's lots of slack in the chain. You don't want to get any magnets close to the, uh, the phasers. You're going to take this bolt here out all the way and you're going to do one of these at a time. And I'm going to show you how to do one of these. You take this bolt all the way out. looks like this right here very nice bolt we don't want to lose where that goes and what we're going to do we're going to push it up just enough we pulled this up just enough where it clears the camshaft see how right here it clears the camshaft so we can take these retainer brackets off now and we'll be able to remove this entire camshaft We'll be able to remove this entire camshaft now. These are T30 bolts that you can start taking off and remove this entire camshaft. Okay, now usually you don't wanna do this, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this about 30 degrees and you can even hear it click like you just did. What that means, this is in the position uh, where it's not locked down, the cam lobes are not locked down at all. This is in the all lock position. Normally you don't do that, but in this case so you do. You wanna take this off with a ratchet. If you use a power tool uh, with Torx, it could strip out the bolts and you don't want that at all. Okay, I'm removing the cam bearing. Removing the cam bearing brackets. And this is a T30. Once they're broke loose, you can take these off by hand. Since we're doing only one at a time, we can't get these confused. As you can see on the side, you can't get these confused. One intake, and then it points toward the front. So this is the first bracket and it's pointed this way. 
and you can't get it confused. Okay, once the cam bearing brackets are removed, it should be able to just come right on out of there. And once they are out of there, these are called cam lobes. And these, uh, these go up against the rocker arms and you wanna see if any's damaged. And if they're not damaged, and if you really look at this thing, and if it's not damaged, you can reuse it. It's a bummer if it is damaged because these cost from the manufacturer here, just these cost from the manufacturer about $300 each. This one looks like it's in good shape and it, that it can be reused. So we're gonna be changing the lifters and the rocker arms. These right here are the rocker arms. They have a bearing here and if you can move that back and forth, then it's bad. This bearing is good. And then this is the lifter here that you can just lift out of there. We're gonna be replacing all of these. Over here, another rocker arm. And then, you know, you just check them as you go. Since we're gonna be replacing them all, I'm gonna see if they're bad or not. That one is good also. Here's a lifter. Another rocker arm. This one has a little play in it. I wouldn't say it's bad. I would say it's starting to go bad. Here's a lifter. Rocker arm. That one's not bad. Here's another lifter. So this is the last one. Doesn't feel bad either. And here's a lifter. Yeah, that one moves up and down. So this is a bad one right here. Okay. Here's what they look like. There's six of each. And we're going to replace them in the whole uh, we're going to replace them in the whole cylinder. So there's going to be 24 all together. All right. It's getting a little late tonight, but hey, I've got a light, so why not? So what I'm doing, I'm I'm pouring uh oil into this bowl so that I can saturate oil into the new rocker arms. I'm gonna let them soak in there for about 15 minutes, then I'm going to install them into the engine. And that way, there won't be any squeaking or break in. You won't have to break in the new parts. They'll already be lubed up. I'm gonna make every part as I put it in as lubed up as I can. And in this particular car, it takes 5W20. As they're saturating, you can see the air bubbles rise to the top. After about 15 minutes, all the bubbles should disappear. And then the rocker arms will be good and lubricated.